booths, Atobu Tales. Uh, we'll be sharing with you what we've gathered so uh, far. Some of them are saying that they are broke, depressed, and following the cessation of road toll operations. One, Evelyn Gadry, uh, will be sharing her story with us. And this is on the back of government reassigning, uh, uh, promising to reassign them. Uh, this is our la latest Joy News uh, tracker. That is up next. Do say. If I get the opportunity, not less than 50% of those engaged you know, to be, to be uh, given to uh, uh, the physically challenged. Because it's one sure way, it's one sure way of, of giving them some employment. The promise to employ persons with disabilities to collect road tolls subsequently became a reality. The MPP government put a smile on the faces of the people who were employed there. Subsequently, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Balmia, made a firm commitment to do more. Persons with, with disabilities would constitute no less than 50% of the people employed to operate toll booths across the country. However, when the Finance Minister, Kenu Foriata, declared that the toll booth operations had been abolished, the hopes of the workers were crushed. The government has abolished all tolls on public roads and bridges. The toll collection personnel will be reassigned, the expected impact on productivity and reduce environmental pollution will more than offset the revenue foregone. The pledge to reassign all toll booth workers has not come to pass yet. For six months, the workers have not received any salaries yet. So we juma ebusunya respect so pa because what free meeting what free will be because when we say they are what it will be able to meet ya. But he say juma no go in a day ebusunya fire in your shoe. At least yeah the yeah the them yeah we say yeah the them the them the cry I forget it say yeah the baby ni yeah the crack koya noa forget yeah forget it them na yeah the no we are focusing on say be koya yeah the but after the way I see Mbabe can on ama yeah disability no aye kesi. Problem na aye kesi pa men kan da da. Enye izi. In a ways yeah yeah. The world is falling on me. I be praying for the man them. Don't nobody understand them. In a ways yeah yeah. That is Evelyn Gadri. She used to work at the Pubiman toll booth. When the going got tough, she started hawking in the street to put food on the table for her four children. She waves through vehicles to sell her wares to commuters. But an accident around the Achimota Melcom area has left her in shock. She identifies the girl who was involved in the accident in a video her taking earlier. Lady Bakon a beggar or not what a wood chain Ukita Mufra Ketua Mun B on your twins. Tia Yawan one is a Mitsuram is a cabby at free. Evelyn joined other two booth workers to pick it at the Ministry of Roads and Highway. But that yielded no results. Yakuhun several times. The Bia is on the pipeline. The Bia also is on the pipeline. The other time, you call Katensi. You are trying to get 11 in two. To what did two movie eight to cry a man of time? Kakani is uncle Bium. You call say it's on the pipeline. The young 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 boat trainer. You are pipe now say ah. But Ben Kwan wants to cry. Wants to. Evelyn is frustrated because her husband's shoe making shop was also demolished, so he's also out of work. First, I'm not able to but I'm not 
one me on a minute my opinion. One shame fifteen years and will be see by this time. And so no one of a family or yemi who had a crabby and had any year manage a crack, but what's a baby boony dino or woman in the kiosk? Me and I may make a juma bano, maybe be a queer fight, a maintain if ye. I didn't know a hand to me. Odoi, Evelyn's husband says he is now miserable because of the current state of the economy. Ni bra ni bra ba ku bi kura ebo sirai na o ma no eh anre da 2b 1.2 o si sa de o de beto to fini nya manya ma ko to wo traffic e mi kura po mi ka chire se eh jinjos no si da bi ko la no ko la no si se a school o mo school fees so mbe ko school kura o mo duane duane di kura be edi Genevieve also used to work at the Pubiman toll booth. Due to the high cost of living and the fact that she's currently jobless, she feels suicidal. Because Last money I'm going to go here now to fill the funds. No, it's my mask. Can I can? I want an IB. I want a ID. I pay for it. I want a SIM. Fifty Ghana. She says the news about the abolition of the toll booth took a toll on her. Prior to that news, a car lost control and crashed into the booth she was working in. She was trying to get away when she fell on her hip, breaking hip implants. And worsening her condition. A certain Kia Bongo came when I gave the ticket. So when he moved for me to serve another uh, car, the ticket, then I heard bang. So I was, I don't know what happened. So I was struggling in the boot till I fell down on my leg. And one of my leg is longer than. Uh, let's say Ghana is longer than Africa, so I, I wear I used to wear special sandals, special sandals. Uh -huh. So it slipped me, and I, I this one this my leg went down uh, heavily, and the implant inside got break. Authorities at the toe booth did not cover her hospital bill. She appealed for funds to undergo surgery and upon recovery, she was hit by the news that two boots had been shut down. I was not at work that time because I had an accident at the workplace, so I was in the house. So when I heard the, the news, you know, it was not easy for me. It was not easy for me to control myself. I was hoping that I will get better and go back to work. And suddenly, the news came out that we are not able to go again. Genevieve says they have been patiently waiting for news about reassignment. The government has been silent. Hmm. Because I have junction, five cities. Oh, but five cities, I am in ten cities. From Junction also, Echo Accra, and say five cities, 50 persons so sign. In the Okwa, ni in and out in Okra, and I say 25 Ghana. Ne Dria ni Kro Bedin Kahu. In the Menibia, not if you. Oh, yeah, electrical engineering. Currently, I spend um, 25 cities a day on transportation. Sometimes my friends do do help me and uh, buy food or, or sometimes I manage to to buy food. So in, in all I spend about five CD just to buy food so that I can be able to use the rest for transportation. The head of the advocacy committee at the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations, Alexander Bankoli Williams, wants government to listen to the cries of his members. 
Unfortunately, the minister did not give us a deadline. Uh, he just indicated that uh, there were uh, some discussions ongoing. As I speak to you, I keep on getting calls from you know our our members who benefited from this. There are people who have undergone surgery. There are people whose kids are now home because of this whole you know uh, turn of events. If the government is not going to get jobs for them immediately, our plea is that the government should reactivate the toll boots. Evelyn and Genevieve are calling on the president to speak up about their concerns. Now, Kenya is not going to Omse we ni nanso kasa o kasa final on kasa no be kire en se ampa ejuma o hoy e mama yen because nya minister kan yen ji ni di nana na ye ji ni di mr his excellency doctor asemba ko o kai na ye mi de ni se the disabled are suffering and inti na o mo mo ba be ye yen yi his excellency the suffering no afi dia ye kesi the Ministry of Roads and Highways says they will solve the problem. Isaac Aj Kwachit is a deputy PRO of the Roads Ministry. The ministry does not have any agreement with the individual contractors or collectors. We cannot deal, deal with them individually, but it is rather the company that employed them. But that notwithstanding, we are engaging with them to ensure that we find a makeable solution to some of these um, squabbles. When will government fulfill this promise? George Kobna, join you striker. Hello there, Joy Business Van. My name is Sewa Jemfiduku, founder and owner of the Good Food Brand Chop Shop. Welcome to our airport residential branch. Come in with me.
prior to Chop Shop, I was working in the bank. I've been working in the bank for the past five years. And even when I started running the business, I was still in the bank till um, I finally decided that the business needed me and so I had to move. I love it when people are happy. You know, I love putting smiles on the faces of people. And so what better way to do it than to, you know, offer amazing recipes that suits the heart. So that's my main purpose for getting into the food business. The Joy Business Van, this Wednesday, on TV, radio, online, and on ground. The Joy Business Van is powered by Joy Business and supported by EcoBank, the Pan-African Bank, and MTN. What are we doing today? A 12 million CD road contract assigned to a company owned by close associates of a minister in the Kufuado government. There will be conflict of interest. Once it's your brother or even any close associate, you have interest. You want the success of the person. After three years, the road construction works have not been completed. First, like if they even leave the road the first way, it was even better than now. Now there is very, 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 very bad. Another 2.6 million CDs planting for food and jobs contracts allotted to the same company. The ministry has taken the necessary steps to engage the, the then deputy regional minister how to structure the payment so it has been done. The GRA tax audit of the company reviews interesting details. Caught in conflict. Coming soon on Joy News. Cars, most of the cars are starting at 4 a.m. Uh, 4 p.m. Now the cars are they are almost stuck in the water, and which was what is is not advisable at all. So I think the next time, you know, if the, the, there is rainfall, at least they should wait for a while, not to come at all, in order to create traffic over here. And also, I'm appealing to the MPs and the MCs and DC in the region that they should focus at this area and create a, at least a paved way for the water in order to start here and also to the authorities of the uh, uh, the uh, St. Mary's in order to help have another companion with the uh, road uh, safety so that they will have a paved way here so that because this is it's not a good advice it's not uh, how many in your estimation how many cars have been affected oh more than 10 and it's not advisable. Previously, it was at least less than 10, but this time more than 10. Because with my, with my, I would as, as, uh, as, a, as when I came and met, I, I met almost more than seven cars around. But by so doing, we have, have a paved way for the cars to pass by. Uh -huh. So my advice is that at least they should focus here because with the Western region, this is the single lane and it's not good at all. If it should be a double lane here and also the gutter is huge here, huh? If they can even scrape the area here, not to sell or those who are having some uh, marketing here, should, they should suck them off from this area because this place is not advisable. <laughs>
Right, so there was a de heavy downpour yesterday uh, that flooded parts of Takrade and the Takrade Agona um, Takwa Highway itself was affected. That was uh, the gridlock it created, and those were some of the people affected that you heard uh, speaking uh, there. Let's now connect to Natalia Kwanza, our correspondent in that area, uh, to give us the latest on that development. Natalia, very good morning to you. Now, what can you report? What is the latest uh, that you can give us on, on this flooding situation? Hello, Natalia. Hello, Ben. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, so um, this morning I'm at a particular spot, I mean the Takwa Apawai Road where it got flooded yesterday. Um, you can see from behind me that there is traffic situation, the traffic situation has not really improved despite there are no flood here at the moment. In fact, um, it was a dark situation here yesterday, about more than 10 cars got submerged in the flood and then people could not move. As at 11 p.m. yesterday, my team and I were still here talking to people who were still trying to make their own way through here. Some had to work for several hours before getting here. And then this, this is not the only place that was affected. I mean, the second year Metro Director, Fonad Mohad, told me that um, that's the first time second year they had experienced five large sliding within um, this region and then other flats in other parts of the areas like we can talk about Ayedu among others. This morning it's still raining you can see and so that's the situation here. Uh, now this situation has affected thousands of commuters. I know you've been interacting with them. Uh, what exactly have they been sharing with you? Well, for them, they feel that um, we are part, I mean, residents are part, we should, you know, access when we are buying lands and building in places because they feel that most people now would always want to get a land and build, not considering the impact it will have on, on humanity, such as the one we experienced yesterday and then last week. They think that city authorities should also live up because anytime it rains, we always get a situation like this particular spot being flooded. Because when last week, for instance, it's rained for two to three days and we had the same situation. And today, today is still raining. We just pray that the place doesn't get flooded again. And, and did, I mean, in terms of loss of property vehicles, I, we all know what happens when water gets into your engine or something of the sort. For those who are affected on that, you know, uh, long stretch, uh, what, what has been their plight? Ben, what else can they do? They, they, they feel so bad. And I mean, it's brought jobs to mechanics on this stretch. This morning when I was coming back, I saw lots of cars at various mechanic shops around which they were working on. There are still some cars on the road which have not been told yet. And so it's becoming stressful. People feel bad, but what can they do? That is the situation now. Well, in Natalia, you uh, stay safe. I see it's, it's pelting. There's a bit of rain there, and you're still caught in it. We'll be coming back to you when uh, th there are other updates that we can take. But stay safe, and uh, thanks for the good work. In Natalia Kwanza is our correspondent in the region and brought us the latest. You can see in your footage some of the vehicles that were affected on the back of uh, yesterday's uh, heavy rains uh, affecting that entire uh, Takrade Agona Takwa uh, stretch. And like she said, uh, mechanics have had a field day. They are making the most of the situation. But the people are calling on authorities, city authorities, uh, to do more about the situation to ensure that when the rains come again, uh, they will not be as stranded as they were this time round. Well, let's now talk about statistics from the National Road Safety Authority, uh, which show that private cars have become more prone to accidents. Bernice Abubedo Lanza has been interacting with the Acting Director General, Engineer David Adonting, on this matter. Lives of the young, the old, and even those unborn. 
It's a big problem we've been trying to deal with for years. Sometimes we make a little progress and then we realize that uh, all the progress is lost eventually. Thankfully today I've got some statistics to share with you and the Acting Director General of the National Road Safety Authority, Engineer David Adonting, to have uh, a very important conversation on safety on our roads and what we have determined to be the problem over the years and how we can solve this and bring the numbers uh, to the most minimum that we can. Let me share with you some data I have here uh, on road traffic accident and it is, it's been put together by the National Road Safety Authority and is on categories of vehicles involved in accidents between January and May 2022. This is very interesting to statistics. So for commercial vehicles, we have 3,669. That is 33.79% of the total number. And for private vehicles, 4,873. That is 44.88%. And for motorcycles, 2,316, that is 21.33%. So clearly, you see that private vehicles are the majority here. And this is interesting because sometime in May, uh, we had a conversation about whether we should restrict, especially these 207 buses or urban buses to intra-city instead of intercity travels because many people assumed then that they were the cause of of, of most of our accidents but engineer today we are learning something new at least for the statistics we have from january to may we are learning that private vehicles uh, were involved in most accidents but do we know the cause of this yeah thank you very much and uh, may, may i say good morning to everyone uh, indeed before i even go into answering this question let me uh, thank uh, Joy News Multimedia for their consistency in supporting National Road Safety Authority when it comes to road safety management generally. I remember the Arrive Alive, the Drive Safe campaign, and this one we just came in also to support the motorcycle safety. Mata Krenzel from Adum FM. I, I think you guys are doing a very good job. But indeed, the statistics clearly showing, and, and that is the practice the National Road Safety Authority and the police combined, would have to every month give an account of what is happening on our roads. We have done that for the first five months into this year. As at the end of May, and as you are just reading in the statistics, indeed, the private vehicles appear to be the most vulnerable in terms of involvement in road crashes. In the first place, they are overrepresented in the road safety space. Their numbers are high relatively compared to commercial and to all others. So naturally you will uh, agree with me and, and admit that they interact more with the road safety other components within the road space. And so you will expect them, of course, to also, um, in terms of the repercussions, have the highest number. But if you compare our activities, how we interact with all these categories of road users within our road space, we do more with the commercial to motorcycles than with the private. Because the private, indeed, are not a group where you can assemble them and interact one-on-one. -on -one. They're always on the run. And if you come to commercial in particular, they are groups, they are associations, unions. And so interacting with them is easier. With regards to private, we only get along with them when we hit the radio, TV, and television, and perhaps the social media. We are unable to come together one-on-one -on -one with them, unless for occasions where we find uh, a certain event or program where we find a lot more of them. For example, as I stand here, the insurance company is organizing a fair. Everybody there if there are 200, 300, or 400 of them is driving a private vehicle, which means that we will have the interaction with them in this particular occasion. But normally, we don't meet them one-on-one. -on -one. And so I, I think that is also one particular problem where we are finding it very difficult to engage them. Beyond that, this is a group where if you hit the highway currently, they are 
the particular group that speed a lot. Because the vehicles, as you know, are saloon cars, they are lighter, they hit the road and the speed limit you can always observe, averagely, is not less than 100 kilometers per hour. Vehicles, private vehicles overtake a lot. And in most cases, in the attempt of overtaking vehicles ahead of them, they do it in a manner that would not be in reference to the requirements of the law. They do it anyhow, anywhere. Now, they are swift. And so sometimes they want to outwit the enforcement of, of the police. Generally, I must say that if you want to talk about indiscipline, then you will not take them out. There are a lot of indisciplined drivers within the private um, you know, driving group. And to be honest, we engage some of them, but not all of them. I think the challenge we have now is how to get to them, how to get them one-on-one -on -one if we, there is an association that is private or uh, driver's association. Then I'm sure we can use the leadership or the structures to be able to talk to them. But we're unable to do that for now. And so I, I think that in terms of representation, in terms of their behavior, speed levels, the way they overtake. And this is also a group that if he decides to drive from here to Tamale, he wants to go all out without resting. There are also some of them who go to funerals in the, in the weekend, during the weekends, and they drink and drive. In fact, we have had a lot of uh, cases where the police and us have mounted uh, outreach and enforcement programs on the roads, and we use alcometers mm -hmm. to test their breath as they move along. And you find that a lot of them, relative to commercials, drink and drive. And I think these are some basic problems that we find associated with the uh, private drivers. Mm. And so based on what you're saying, and even uh, as you were speaking, I was trying to cast my mind back to conversations we've had on road safety. Would you say we focused too much and maybe in an unfair manner on commercial vehicles and put the blame solely on their shoulders over, over the years? I, I think that in the past, the commercial group happened to be the leaders in terms of their involvement in crashes. Both the crashes in itself in absolute terms and also in terms of the casualties. But things are changing because of course our engagement practices and rosity management practices are focused on them because of the past. And I must say that gradually it is seeing positive results because we are able to put in place measures that concentrate and focus on the commercial, private or transport operator services. And I must say and commend them that from the statistics as I see now, if the figures have now reduced and now seeing more reduction in the commercial industry than the private, then I think I must commend them because it gives me an impression to suggest that they are responding to our calls, listening to our messages and behaving accordingly. Of course, there may be one or two who may be recalcitrant. But I think the majority of them are responding very positively to our calls. I must commend the leadership of transport operators, the GPRTUs, the Pro Tours, the VIPs, the VVIPs, and so on. Because we engage them, uh, you know, very frequently. We are with them all the time. We share ideas. There are a lot of common grounds that we meet to discuss the challenges. And they are also able to sink down to their rank and file. Um, they, we have put in place certain mechanisms that I see, I see that is working perfectly this time around. For example, there's a tracking system. Can you believe that? Now we sit in our offices and we are able to track them in traffic, in real time, how they are behaving. If they are doing wrongful overtaking, we can see. If they are speeding, we can see. If they stop, we can see. So bring in technology and they even accepting to work with us with technology, I think it's doing the trick. Because so, so, sorry to interject. So beyond seeing what they do, what measures are there to, to halt the, 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 the practice, the inappropriate behavior? Yes, there are puni we, we have punishment regimes. In fact, among the transport operators themselves, if we bring to the attention a particular driver who was speeding or who misbehaved or drove uh, contrary to the requirements of the law, we are able to identify the particular driver, the vehicle number, the time where he misbehaved because we are using geographical systems. And they are able to identify who at the time was behaving or misbehaving at that time, bring him out, and they punish him. Some go on suspension. What about those who 
also don't belong to any of these units. I think this is where the problem comes to because by law, all any person who would want to operate transport service commercially must belong to a union or a company. Now, I think people are challenging this particular provision of the law because they think the constitution, uh, we, we have liberty as to freedom of association. And so people are hiding behind this and doing their own thing. But one of the critical decisions that confronts the National Road Safety Authority is to make this law work. And so in the coming days or weeks, we are engaging the industry to see how we can bring all these operators who are not under any union or company to come and join unions or form unions, our associations. Through the Registrar General, you go and register and we're going to give them numbers as to how many can constitute a union or an association. It's one thing we're going to do in the coming months because we see that they must be controlled. Now, because we were a commission in the past, we did not have the mandate to group them and regulate them. Now, government has now transformed the National Road City Commission to an authority. And one of the dispensations that is required by an authority is to regulate the industry of commercial uh, transport services. So it behoves on us that in the coming days or weeks, we group all of these and let them understand and appreciate why it is important for them to group. Because in that case, we can be able to engage them through education, sensitization, and even ensuring that they operate within standards. So it's, it's a big challenge, I must say. And so if you look around uh, the, most of the cities, in the cities of Accra, Kumasi, Takwa, Tapkradi, and the rest, you see that some even load on the road. Yeah. They don't enter the, 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 the stations. And so it is also going to one of the requirements very soon that we are not going to allow any operator, driver for that matter, to load along the road. It is a requirement that all transport service providers must load at loading terminals, approved loading terminals. Which includes bus stops. Includes bus stops. And so we're going to move all of them away. But you know, it's a process. It, it takes time to get all these things done. Mm. It's a practice that they have been in it for a very long time. And so you cannot one day wake up and stop them. I think it has to be understood by all of us. But we're going to push all of them from the road to enter a certain station, loading terminal. We give them the kind of standards and then they will operate from there. And, and, and so it's a gradual process, I must say. Uh, and, uh, engineer, while we were talking about the statistics we earlier shared, you uh, credited the decline in the number of commercial vehicles to education and campaigns that you've embarked on over the years. So now that we are realizing that uh, the private vehicles are involved in most of the accidents on our roads, what's the strategy now? Yes, I, I, I must say that, as you're aware, road safety management comprises four uh, components. We have the education, we have the enforcement, we have the engineering, and then emergency response. I know that our good friends from the road agencies are doing their best. Look at the line markings you can see around. Uh, look at the surface of the roads. So I believe that the Ministry of Roads and Highways, Ghana Highway Authority, Department of Urban Roads and Feeder Roads are doing their best. Now beyond that, we have to sensitize people to appreciate the need to protect themselves when they are in traffic. And that is what we do. We came up with Arrive Alive. Remember, multimedia. You, you, you started it all. And then we joined you. It became so huge. And we had to even step it up to stay alive. Now we are convinced that the kind of awareness creation that we have created together with the media has gone up to the extent that I must confess, in fact, with figures and facts, that we are about 80% plus in terms of awareness creation. Now what is required of us maintain or sustain the, the, the energy with the media again. But enforcement must come in. That is why we are supporting the Ghana Police Service to come up with some innovation. And you know what is coming up? Look around, the cameras. Now, it is going to be difficult for any driver, whether private or commercial, to misbehave because we'll find you. The camera will identify you, detect whatever you're doing, and they will come for you. And we have done a couple of them in the past. Now we want to move on to the highways. Very soon, and I must say by September, if I'm right, because I know how advanced the police has gone with this camera business, we are going to spread the cameras on the highways. The job the camera is going to do is to identify speeding or overspeeding, if you like, uh, drivers, especially from the commercial and private. When you are detected, 
we will automatically get the information in the control room, what we call the back office. Now, the back office will direct us through DVLA data as to where you are, where you are located, where you operate from. And then we'll follow up and get you a ticket to go and redeem yourself at a pay point, just as it's done everywhere uh, in, in Europe and, and the Americas. So that's where we come in. So where we are unable to come physically to engage you, the cameras are going to do the business for us. And I, I think that is one particular measure that we are all hoping, that if it comes up, we will detect all recalcitrant drivers. Those who have an advice and they fail to heed to our advice, the camera will bring you up and will deal with you according to the law. Engineer, just like the flooding issue, there is the human element uh, where you talk about behavior and lack of adherence to road traffic regulations. And then there is the engineering element where people point faults to how our roads have been made and uh, the kinds of um, sometimes modifications that are made. So coming to do this interview with you this morning, a colleague of mine was just sharing with me. He lives just around the Kokumlimli Kukum enclave. And he was talking about the Aveno traffic lights, that spot. I'm told that almost every week there is a deadly accident there. Just two days ago, we were told that a police officer was involved in a ghastly accident, ran over a couple of people because the road um, transitions from a three lane to two lanes. And so, uh, sorry, we would have to move a bit because of the vehicle coming behind us. Sorry so about that. The kind of space we find ourselves in. Uh, yes. So it's part of the, the, yes, the this, uh, yes. Yes. So, 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 so there's uh, there's that situation where the the road transitions from a three lane into a two lane, and there, according to them, I haven't taken time to observe, but according to them, there are no there are no signages, there are no markings, there are, there's no alert. Besides that, um, I would want to believe that based on police data that they share with you, the Road Safety Authority, you may be aware of certain spots that are accident prone. So using the Aveno place as an example, when it comes to engineering and road modification, how do we deal with the problem? How do we stem it? Because if there's an accident there every week or every other week, then clearly there's a problem. Indeed. Uh, I think I agree with you perfectly. We have a monitoring system and data that is pointing to all the hotspots. We are aware. We call them black spots. Every year, we identify 20 of such locations in every region and we deal with them. But most happen to be engineering. And so our engineers are always, in most cases, at these locations, identifying them and putting engineering interventions. But we cannot do it all. Now, there are certain locations where we require also the human element of it. After all, when we get to some intersections and we know that the traffic lights are not working, then we have to be careful. We have to be cautious of the fact, and we see that they are not working. And, and so we have to now change our driving style. In some cases, we get a police or police assistant, the national service guys whom we have trained, to be there to support the, the, the system before uh, something happens. But sometimes you wouldn't find them there, especially in the night. I think this is where we also call upon the motorists to be cautious when you get to these areas. In any case, there are certain in the interventions that require time. Some of them may be redesigning the entire alignment of the road. It takes a lot of time. There are others that require huge investment of resources. Now, if the road agency is not ready for a particular time, then clearly what it means is that the, that particular uh, location would have to be there for some, for some time. Unfortunately, there are areas that require road signs. You go and put the signs there and people vandalize. Even traffic lights. In recent times, at Kaukudi Junction, where you know it's a very hot spot, some people went and stole the controller of the traffic lights. The controller. They stole it. And it's expensive. It also takes time before it is reinstalled. So I, I believe that it's, it's a holistic uh, problem that we are dealing with. But I must say, one of the critical requirements, provisions that government has now granted the National Road Safety Authority is that look around. Don't only blame the driver. Don't only follow them. 
but follow institutions that have the mandate to put in place one thing or the other to protect the motorists. And so we have now been a regulator on, in the road safety space. Any institution that has one thing or two to do and you fail to do, the National Road Safety Authority will take it up. Take it up means that it is part of your standards. It is part of your responsibility. And you will have to answer to us why you, you have not or you have negated, relegated your, your responsibilities. You need to do it. So we have our monitoring team moving around. As I speak to you, we are writing to the Department of Urban Roads to notify them and inform them that within the next 60 days, we will want to see all traffic lights functioning in the city. Failure of which the law provides that we should take the matter up to a level that can compel this industry or this uh, institution to do the right thing. Likewise, we can move to any institution, for example, street lights. As we see, most of them will not be functioning at a particular time. It is the Ministry of Energy that has the responsibility. The, 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 the new act of the National Road City Authority mandates us to approach the Ministry of Energy through any means, legal, for example, to compel them to ensure that these lights are working. What it means is that there are times that certain institutions also uh, are a bit like a disical, uh, in terms of laxity, they, they fail to honor their part of the, of the bargain. Well, we have all agreed that we want to reduce deaths and injuries. It is important that they also move very fast and quick and respond to demands of, of, of road safety problems. I must say that, and I admit, that all is not well uh, currently. But if you look at the rate that we are moving, given that leadership required by a lead agency like the National Road Safety Authority, we will carry our stakeholders along. We will. Because the last five months has given us something to think. Collectively, under the Stay Alive and Arrive Alive campaign, we have been able to pull them along, especially the police. Whilst we were sensitizing, talking about speeding, talking about don't drive tired, and so on, the police followed us with their strength and power and capacity to also apprehend, detect recalcitrants under the, the, the War Against Indiscipline program. Currently, police has also launched alongside PARI, the police action against uh, indiscipline, which is also running. They have also launched a program called PI, the Public Invisible Eye. All these are watching. We are looking around the roads, the road space, identifying what is wrong and dealing with them. I think that is a matter of time and it's patience. We have launched a, a road safety information center called, uh, well, with short code 194. We are going to deal with some of the problems through that channel, as you have just complained. We are asking any individual here in Ghana who is interested in road safety, please send information or call us, WhatsApp or SMS message about problems that you identify within the road space that require our attention. 194, we launched it during Easter. And it is something we are giving opportunities to everybody, wherever we cannot be, and you are there like Aveno, as you're saying, please draw our attention to it. We will move very quickly, identify the problem, and then direct it to the relevant institution to go and deal with. If he fails to do it, then I think we can use our law to apprehend them and do what is right. Now, that's a very nice way to wrap up our conversation. 194 is the number to call. And as you've heard today, there's a couple of interventions, or there are a couple of interventions that have been put in place to help deal uh, with road accidents. And this morning, I've been speaking to the Acting Director General of the National Road Safety Authority, Engineer David Adonting. He said a couple of things. We'll keep our eyes uh, on the work that they have been doing, and we'll bring you all the update. But for now, all you need to know is you need to drive safe to remain alive so that when we have that conversation you can be a part of it back to you in the studio well that was Bernice Abubedo Lanza uh, quite uh, the conversation she had with the acting director of the National Road Safety Authority engineer David Adonte well that is how we cap off the show but before we go a very happy birthday to Felicity Nelson 
today happens to be your birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you. God richly bless you. Uh, also, 45th, happy 45th birthday to Mr. Emmanuel Asiedu, founder, CEO of Virtual Group of Africa and Virtual Infosec Africa. He's from management and staff of the Multimedia Group. Also to you, CEO of the Chamber of Agribusiness, uh, my own buddy from way back in school, Anthony Morrison. But look, Awake is premium purified water treated through a strict purification process to ensure that every bottle on the market refreshes you better. We have the perfect size for every occasion, 330 and 500 ml bottles to fit your pockets and bags, 750 ml for the heavy drinkers and 1.5 liters for those who always want more. We have also introduced our special 19-liter jars for offices and homes. Now, you simply need to stay awake with Awake Purified Drinking Water wherever you go. So come on, grab a bottle of Awake and get quality hydration. Awake Purified Drinking Water, one for life. Remember, for every bottle you purchase, an amount is donated to the National Cardiothoracic Center. Isn't that heartwarming? It's produced by Casa Preco. For bulk purchases, just call 0262 3512 Five, one. And now, just so you know, VAT returns are due for submission on the last working day of every month. Failure to submit returns attracts a penalty. Do note that. Last working day of every month. Now, rent to own is a two, three, or four bedroom house or beachfront villa in the new Accra City. Cities and habitats rent to own at a price you can afford and at a pace you can pay. Visit www.newacra.city for more details or call or WhatsApp the following numbers 0555 530 300 or 0577 911 101. Again, 0557 054 635. The Planned Cities Extension Project Shaping Ghana's Urban Future. And on that note, hopefully, we've shaped your morning for the better. Bernice Abubedu Lanza. And yours truly, we're serving you a lot more tomorrow morning. So stay with us. But up next, we have Joy News Desk. We'll be bringing you the latest in news. On that note, have a wonderful day. God bless.